Okay, everyone, today I'm going to be showing you something I created that is blacker than Vanta Black. So, if you haven't heard of Vanta Black before, Vanta Black is a new material that's made from carbon nanotubes and it absorbs 99.965% of visible light. Now, this stuff is black, but today I'm going to be showing you something that's even blacker than Vanta Black. And I'm going to be showing you how black this actually is by shining the world's brightest flashlight, this 32,000 lumen flashlight onto it and seeing if we can see any reflection. And then we're going to take it even further and shine this 5 watt burning laser onto it and see if we see any reflection then. So first let me show you what it looks like and then after I do my experiments I'll tell you how I made it. Okay, so here it is on this piece of paper here. So I don't have any Vanta black to compare it to, but I have two other blacks here to compare it to. So this is my black that's darker than Vanta black. This is black 2.0 and this is a black Sharpie. So black 2.0 is the blackest paint available on the market and I've done some experiments with this before. It absorbs around 96% of light. This black Sharpie marker, not so sure how much this absorbs, but my black here should absorb more than 99.96% of light. So let's see how different these look under some bright lights. So as I do this experiment, the light's gonna get brighter, but I'm gonna let it auto adjust the ISO, meaning that it won't look like the light's getting way brighter as I increase the lumens, but in reality it is. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I don't do that, then there's gonna be a lot of bleed over from the reflections. Even if this square isn't reflecting anything, there's gonna be some bleed over into the pixels and so it will look like this is reflecting stuff. Okay, so we'll start off with 120 lumens. So you can see that the black 2.0 is doing pretty good at absorbing most of this. The black Sharpie marker, you can see it's not really absorbing all of it. There's a little white coming through, it's not very black. But then my black hair, is still just as black as can be. Let's move it up. We got 500 lumen. You can see the difference here. 1500 lumen. So even now the black 2.0 is starting to get some reflection here. Black Sharpie is getting a lot, but my black is just as black as can be over here. 5,000 lumen, look at that. Can't believe how black that is. 13,000 lumen, holy cow. Look, the Sharpie marker now just almost completely turns white. Same with the black 2.0, you get a total reflection here. But then when I move it over this one, still just as black as can be. You can see this is not some edit here. Okay, now let's move up to 32,000 lumen. You ready? Three, two, one. Holy cow. So the black Sharpie is like almost white now and the black 2.0 is getting white too, but the black over here is just still as black as can be. You can't even notice a change in it. So now I'm gonna try to quantify how black this actually is. Cause I've been saying it's blacker than Vanta black, but is it really blacker? Well, I'm gonna try to use this luminance app on my phone here. And what it does is it measures luminance, but it's kind of hard because it does it based on the camera and the camera auto adjusts for brightness. And luminance, this unit here is candelas per meter squared. And for reference, a candle gives off around one candela. So on the white here, we're getting around 0.1 to 0.15 luminance. It drops to around 0 0.0007 is the lowest. It goes up a little bit after that, but that's because the camera turns up its ISO. So what you really have to look at is as soon as I go over the black, what it changes to. So this is the white, and then this is the black. White black, white, black. So you can see how it switches. So the lowest value I'm getting from this is around 0 0.00001 or 0 0.00002 luminance. 
And then for the baseline, I'm getting around 0.12 to 0.15, so I'll call it 0.13. So that means it's absorbing at least 99.992% of all light going into it. For comparison, let's see how black 2.0 looks. So we're getting around, looks like the lowest value is 0.006. So, so I get around 95% of the light being absorbed with black 2.0. And that's about what its value should be. Around 96% of light gets absorbed by black 2.0. So this is a pretty crude way of measuring the amount that, of light that it's absorbing, but it looks like it works okay. Okay, so we could not get any reflection with our 32,000 lumen flashlight. Let's see what happens when we shine a laser on it. So this is a five watt burning blue laser here. Now let's try it across my black that's blacker than Vanta black. So here we go. Black 2.0, Sharpie, and my black. Nothing. Look at that. It essentially just goes away. You don't see any reflection at all. That's crazy. So what I have here almost perfectly mimics what we call in physics a black body. So a black body is a theoretical object that absorbs 100% of incoming radiation. And we know that this doesn't absorb 100%, but we saw that it was at least 99.99% of incoming light. And why perfect black bodies are important is because perfect black bodies allow us to calculate the maximum energy emitted by anything at a particular temperature. So if I'm talking about a black body as a perfect absorber, why did I just say it allows us to calculate how much energy is emitted? That's because black bodies are perfect absorbers but that means they're also perfect emitters. And the reason that things that are good absorbers of radiation are also good emitters of radiation is because absorbance and emission are just opposites of each other. And so something that has a lot of electron transition states to absorb light also has a lot of transition states to emit light. But if you don't like that explanation of it, think of it like this. And the reason that has to be true is because if it wasn't, then it would violate the second law of thermodynamics because this is what would happen if it didn't also emit radiation perfectly. Now this absorbs radiation better than any other object in the room. And what would happen if it didn't emit that radiation? Well, it would just continue to get hotter and hotter and hotter because it's a perfect absorber, so anything that hits it is gonna stay there and just turn into heat. And so it would just get warmer and warmer and warmer. And since it's a better absorber than anything else in the room, it would get warmer. And if it wasn't a perfect emitter, it would just get hotter and hotter and hotter while everything on the, in the room got colder and colder and colder. And so basically any room you set this into, it would just get hotter and the room would get colder with no energy. And that violates the second law of thermodynamics. So we know that that can't be possible. And the reason it's not possible because any black body that's a very good absorber of radiation means that it's also a good emitter of radiation. And you should notice the difference between something emitting light and something reflecting light. So you can see that this reflects light, that means that it doesn't absorb it. So the light that hits it gets bounced off, it doesn't get absorbed. But if it were to emit light, that would mean that the light itself is coming from this material. So this does not emit light very well, it does reflect light well though. And so what's important for physics to do with black body radiators like this is to heat them up. Because once you heat them up, then they'll start emitting radiation above the infrared range. And it will get higher and higher and higher until eventually it's in the visible wavelength. And this is the curve that you've probably seen before that relates a specific temperature of an object to the wavelength of light that it emits. And we use a black body radiator to do this because it depends only on the body's temperature and on nothing else. And so it gives you a pure spectrum based only on temperature. Interesting enough, the sun itself is also a pretty good model of a black body radiator. And confusing as it sounds, the sun itself is actually a pretty good model of a perfect black body. So the way I did this is I stole the idea from a physicist named Gustav Kirchhoff. In 1859, he was trying to figure out something that he could use to model a perfect black body radiator. And so what he did to model that was just poke a hole in a box. Now watch me poke this hole in the box and look what color it is. It's black. Now the reason that poking a hole in a box looks black is because 
the light that comes into it hits all the surfaces inside of there and it gets reflected all around but the chances of it coming back out that hole are really low because once it gets in there it gets scattered all different locations and so hardly any of the incoming light actually comes out of this hole and so that's exactly what i did here so what this is is it's actually a hole that's going into a box that's painted with black 2.0 inside the big box So you can see this is my box here. And that's my hole coming into it. And so all of the light that comes into this gets absorbed. And so this may seem like a tricky way that I just made a hole be the thing that was black, but actually this is the specific way in physics that you model black body radiation is by basically using a hole in a box. In fact, they used this specific experiment of a hole in a box when they actually did the individual experiments where they modeled black body radiation and came up with the solution to the ultraviolet catastrophe. So it's a pretty simple method, but it turns out to be pretty ingenious. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. I'm always looking at your comments and I like hearing you comment or ask me any questions that you have in the comments section. And if you haven't headed over to theactionlab.com, head over there now and check out my new subscription box. You can actually get your very own vacuum chamber. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.